Okay, so what goes wrong with these? Uh, basically, I think the LGs, LGs have a similar thing where the, uh, the defrost, they had an uh, uh, upgrade kit where the defrost, the defroster didn't go down far enough into the defrost drain area. Uh, I've used the coat hanger, wrap the coat hanger around there and stick it down the defrost tube. Um, so we got it fairly loose, but it's still, it's still uh, hanging up up here. It's a little bit cold, but uh, I don't want to break anything, so I'm just going to kind of let it do its thing for a little while. Hopefully it'll come loose. Um, but yeah, typically the defrost drain will get plugged up in, on this. And then the circulation fan in here, um, the condenser fan inside here, basically it will get frosted up and then it won't blow the cold air around to where it's supposed to be, right? Um, so this actually has, it's a single compressor and I'm going to work on clearing out the defrost drain uh, through the back side now with a uh, kind of a coat hanger. Um, and uh, you can also use like a bicycle uh, brake uh, uh, cable to do that. Okay, here we have the dreaded Samsung with the <coughs> defrost issue. That frost built up in there. So we got it unplugged. I'm going to have to take this back off part thing in here. Make sure it's all defrosted. Going to have to check the uh, defrost drip pan. Make sure it's flowing. Clean this lint out. And so I've got my handy dandy uh, heat gun. And it may take several hours to defrost this. Um, and we do have a backup refrigerator. We're going to take and put all the stuff in the freezer in there. And uh, may have to leave this defrost to defrost overnight. But we might be able to get it. All oh, the gory details. The gory details. So I had to hack away and... shells out and we have to take this back panel off okay here comes the part where <clears throat> you want to sit here and hack ice all freaking day or you want to just unplug it and let it let it do its own thing um, so I would think that I'm going to try and heat it up a little bit but you can see there's actually solid ice behind this which is going to be and I've had these things uh, set for oh, six hours and still not be completely defrosted um, if you use the heat gun it's going to expedite things uh, but yeah so I may let this just thaw out for a day and come back later uh, and clean up my big mess here um, and clean out that lint in the back uh, but let's see how far we can get on this okay so this little mount whatever thing here in the middle basically these tabs you have to push in on each side to pull it out and then you can take that shelf out so yeah it sits in there like that and then you can see there's something in there you got kind of these holes you have to push with a flathead screwdriver one at a time pull that one out and then push on this side pull that out and this will come out Okay, let's put this in an organized place here where I can remember. So, if you're using a heat gun, basically you want to put your hand up there so that when you're using it, it doesn't melt the uh, plastic. Because this thing, this one gets pretty hot. So if your hand is right around it and you can feel it, you can feel if it's going to melt or not. So that way you don't melt anything. Okay, be careful with these screws that hold this rack holder in. These screws, they get uh, rounded out. So you got to use the proper, uh, whatever, large Phillips. Because you don't want to drill these out, believe me. So, and then once you pull the, there's a little cover, that cover comes off. 
right there. There's a screw behind it. A screw down here. Holds this rack thing in. And then, uh, here's where you go to decide whether you want to, like, go to it or not. If you're using a heat gun, be careful because you can bend this stuff. You can permanently bend it if you heat it up too much and you're trying to pull on it. Um, there's probably some ice in here holding it together. If you pull too hard on it, there's styrofoam in here. If you pull too hard on it, you'll break the styrofoam. And so that's, you know, what you want to think about. If you're in a big hurry to get this done, you could probably glue the styrofoam back together. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the back and then look at the back uh, evaporation uh, tub and um, make sure that the drain uh, orifices are clear. And meanwhile, we'll just kind of let this thing kind of defrost a little bit on its own so I don't have to rip it apart. Okay, so we got a bunch of ice out. And thing is, is that, oh, I've been here, what, at least an hour working on this thing. Tried to clean the uh, defrost drain out through the bottom. It froze up uh, inside there. I had a wire. We tried to run through there. It didn't work. Um, it's still pretty cold. I can actually feel a, kind of a big chunk of ice right under here. And, I mean, it's almost there, but not quite. And I'm not going to reef on it. And so since we got time... We're just going to let it set, let it do its thing, and, um, yeah, that's what we're going to do. And uh, I'm going to have to come back tomorrow and deal with it. Basically, once again, defrost drain gets plugged up. Sometimes the fan can go bad. There's also a defrost thermostat and a defrost rheostat in there. Um, but typically, it's the defrost drains plugged up. And in order to t check the defrost thermostat, basically has to be frozen. And uh, there's a certain ohm reading you can take on the uh, the rheostat, or it's also called, I believe, a thermostat. I uh, know it's a thermistor. Yeah, so it's a thermistor, a little white uh, thermistor about the size, quarter size of my pinky, and you can get an ohm reading off of it. But we're gonna leave this one for another day. Um, but you get the idea. Uh, there's basically a defrost drain in here. You need to take and make sure that's clear and wrap a piece of coat hanger around the, the heater, the defrost heater, and run it uh, down the defrost drain about a half an inch. Uh, so extend it from the heater down into the defrost drain. So that's going to add more heat down into the defrost drain so it doesn't get plugged up. And so that's what I do. Thanks for watching, guys. If you need any help, you can contact me, 707-443-8347, BassTech72588. Okay, so what happens on these? Basically, uh, there's a, I think it's called a rheostat, a small thing about the size of a, a pencil, about that long, white thing, with two wires coming out of it. Um, there's also a thermostat, defrost thermostat. Um, that could go bad. Likely it's the defrost drain. Okay, so if we get the back panel off, can I take a heat gun and go back here and take a look? Ooh. Tight squeeze, but I can do it. I'm confident, because what's the use of being negative about this? No use. So we can see that these coils need to be cleaned. Yep, they need to be cleaned. And you can see that there is water in the defrost area, the defrost pan here. Yeah, there's a little bit of water. So that's a good sign. That indicates to me that these, these are the, there's two drain tubes, one here and one there. So. The water down there indicates that these drain tubes are clear to me, but they're just frozen. Um, as soon as all this stuff defrosts, we're going to have a lot more water in here. You can take these off and take a look at them and make sure they're not clogged. Um, also you can run a coat hanger up through here. And then what I do is I take the heat gun because you can feel it's pretty cold here. I'll take a heat gun and just heat up 
the areas where these defrost tubes go on the back of this all the way up to the refrigerator compartment and so that it will clear any ice in the defrost tubes.